Good evening. It could be a wet night for some folks in the heartland. Scattered showers and even thunderstorms could roll through during the overnight hours. To find out the latest, let's check in with WIBS for your first alert forecast. Yeah, we are dry right now, as you can see on First Alert Doppler Network. But as Molly mentioned, thunderstorms are just off to our south and west. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at those storms because we are watching severe storms just off to our south and west. And we even have tornado watches kind of bumping up to our western counties in southeast Missouri and another watch off to our south and west. Right now, just severe thunderstorm warnings with this line as it continues to move our direction. It's moving at about 40 to 45 miles per hour. So that will put it in parts of the heartland here within the next couple of hours and even a couple isolated cells popping up ahead of that line and no uh, lightning with that cell right now, but that's not to say we could see a little lightning if those do continue to strengthen. So please do keep that in mind as we uh, move through the overnight hours. We could be first of all, put under a watch in some areas, and second of all, could see some strong winds and uh, also the possibility of some isolated tornadoes. So future Doppler, as we roll it ahead real quickly, you can see those showers and thunderstorms get very close to the heartland and push on in here close to the midnight hour. I'll of course, track it farther into the overnight hours into your Tuesday forecast all coming up. Grave markers identifying veterans as far back as the revolution are scattered and damaged throughout the Murfreesboro Cemetery. City leaders now plan to change that. Jock Maluka has more. More than 150 years of weather has definitely taken its toll on many of these gravestones. Some fallen, cracked, or simply worn down. Leaders in the city of Murfreesboro now planning to bring in a restorer to fix around 45 broken stones dating back to the Civil War and some as far as the American Revolution. Murfreesboro Mayor Will Stevens said making these repairs has been talked about for several months. You know, people go on a battlefield to die, uh, and that's, I don't know that there's anything bigger than that type of sacrifice. So far, the city's appropriated $6,000 to make these repairs that are expected to begin soon. Live local late breaking, Giacomo Luca, Heartland News. Memorial Day is a time to remember the men and women who gave their lives defending America. Today, hundreds of people from Eagles Lodges across the country marched to support those who have passed as well as those still serving. Folks over at the Carbondale Eagles Lodge walked across town to show support for our troops and to honor the fallen. Lodge President Jennifer Morgan said it's not about how far you go, but that you get out to show it. It makes me very proud of our community and makes me think that at least some of them still care for our veterans and the veterans that have fallen to give us our freedom. Go back around there. This was the 13th annual Eagles Lodge Memorial Day Walk. General John A. Logan is a namesake for many things throughout the heartland. And here's a fun fact. He's also referred to by many as, quote, the father of Memorial Day. Loretto Cruz explains. This is about Logan. This is about the Civil War, a time when American lives were taken by American lives. Ironic, according to local historian Michael Jones, that it was also the birth date of Memorial Day, which he says in the modern day is patriotism at its best. He came to feel it was his most lasting legacy, the best thing he did. The man had charisma. A prominent Union general and active politician, Logan was born in this Murfreesboro home in 1826. He would one day sign a general order which nationally recognized a day in May to remember fallen soldiers. He was sorely afraid that what these men had done would be forgotten. And I mean, it was a horrible war. It was originally named Decoration Day, a Southern tradition when family and loved ones would lay flowers and flags on soldiers' graves. The South had one that they established in 1866 for Confederate soldiers, and he established his for Union soldiers. And today that holiday has come to be for all soldiers. Jones says he hopes the day will always remain a day of honor and respect. I think we need to take time out from our picnics and our sales and the other things we do to enjoy the day, to attend these Memorial Day services and to think about these men and women who've sacrificed so much for us. From Jackson County, Loretto Cruz, Heartland News. General Logan was the keynote speaker 149 years ago at the first Memorial Day service at the Woodlawn Cemetery in Carbondale. That service is considered one of the very first Memorial Day ceremonies in the country. 
A suspected killer is back in the heartland and facing murder charges. New Madrid County Sheriff Terry Stevens says 19 year old Dion Martin is now in custody. Martin faces charges of first degree murder, armed criminal action and robbery in the first degree. Police had been following leads since 59 year old Brenda Smith was shot and killed during a robbery in Parma last week. Sheriff Stevens says Martin tried to cash in on a stolen lottery ticket in Dexter and Bernie that also helped lead to his arrest. A group in Ferguson is working to unseat Mayor James Knowles. The group plans to present a petition to recall the mayor at Tuesday's city council meeting. This comes in response to the August shooting death of unarmed black teenager Michael Brown by a white police officer. In the midst of a federal investigation related to that incident, other city officials resigned. Knowles, however, says an effort to push him out of office would set the city back. At this time, the group says they've collected around 2,200 signatures of registered voters. As millions of Americans were traveling today, anonymous threats were made against commercial airliners. One was serious enough that the U.S. Air Force scrambled two fighter jets to escort a passenger plane to JFK Airport. Marley Hall has the latest. Emergency crews surrounded two airplanes at New York's JFK Airport Monday afternoon. Both were kept far away from the terminal after someone called in threats. According to investigators, the anonymous caller said the Air France plane on the left was carrying chemical weapons. It landed after getting an escort by Air Force fighter pilots. So stay below seven and we've got the uh, fighters sight up fast. Very good. Uh, reference that, you can climb to whatever outfit you're requesting. Yeah, I'll keep climbing. They're overhead. Most passengers knew nothing until they landed. Didn't know about it at all. Hear them? No. no zero. No. And I had a window seat. Nothing. There was a lot of police cars around and uh, fire res rescue vehicles, and it was clear that something was happening. Officials say no hazards were found on board either plane. Similar threats nearly interrupted a flight from England, and three planes were searched at Newark Liberty International Airport. One law enforcement source now believes there were about 10 threats to airlines Monday. Authorities at the McHenry State Police Barracks in Maryland say they received a call around 6.30 in the morning with several threats to commercial aviation. They do not believe any were credible. No arrests have been made.